Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I wanted to get started today by saying thank you very much to all our new members who joined the Symphony POS Support private Facebook group. It's been a ton of fun catching up with you guys, chatting about Symphony and Oracle hospitality in general. If you're not a member of the group, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's free to join and open for everyone. We had a request from Brian to talk about modifiers in general and specifically special modifiers. In that situation where you want to send a message to the kitchen and you don't have that preset modifier, it would be good if we can pop up a keyboard and actually type in what we want them to do. So I'm going to sign in to my system here and begin a fast transaction for just one guest. And I'm going to ring up an appetizer. And as I go here to my food prep area, we have a lot of modifiers at the top. So we have add, no, sub, light, etc. And also we have a do not make. And then we have this big screen lookup that contains a bunch of cheeses, fruit and everything else. And you can use them in conjunction with each other, such as add American cheese, for example. But we don't have a button where we can push to have an actual keyboard. So we're going to add that now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this transaction and let's jump to EMC and see how we would program it. And here we are in EMC and the first thing we need to do is add a new menu item class. So I'm going to open my menu item classes here and I have them programmed at the enterprise level. If yours are programmed at the property level, make sure you select that and under the configuration tab, click menu item classes. Now, these are all the menu item classes we have programmed in our system. And typically what we see in databases is that the ones for the menu items will be at the top and then the ones for the modifiers will be towards the bottom. So I have my regular ones, my food ones. These are the ones that require modifiers. So this one would be the meat temp that would require um, meat temperature. So we will assign this one to a steak. We also have a build your own omelet style where you can just enter the different omelet toppings and so on. The ones that we're interested in are actually starting here in the 5000s area. So this one that starts with M meat temp is actually the condiment membership. So the R meat temp would be assigned to the menu item itself, such as the steak. And the M meat temp is for the condiment membership. So this one would be assigned to the modifier rare, medium rare, medium well done, and so on. And all of these are exactly the same. And I can show you really quick how they are connected to each other. So under the option bits, these are the option bits that I have selected for the modifier memberships. Basically, option bit number two is what determines if this menu item class is made for a menu item or a modifier or condiment. So this one that says R meat temp does not have number two on. You see off equals regular menu item. M meat temp does have it on, which identifies it as a modifier. And the way we link these two is through the condiment groups. So you can see here on the screen, we have three basic columns. These two, the first two, the require condiments and allow condiments kind of go hand in hand with each other where we would have to check the box here. So we have it checked for required meat temp. Now I don't have it checked for allowed modifiers because I actually have an all mods box here at the bottom, but you want to make sure if you don't have this all mods one, uh, you want to make sure that you have both of them checked on. So modifier group number one is for meat temperature. The one that says require meat temperature should have both of these on and the one that is for the condiments themselves or the modifiers should have the third one, the membership ones. And that's why when we actually click on a menu item that requires meat temperature, such as a steak, it will call on to show all of the members of the group called meat temp, which are going to be assigned via this menu item. So just a quick overview there of our uh, required menu items. But what we're really interested in to make that keyboard pop up is here under the general modifiers. So these are the ones that I showed you earlier, the add, no, and uh, what we have here is general mods and then priced mods. So both of these are programmed pretty much the same. The only difference in them is gonna be the print class. So the general modifiers that we would say, light, 
dressing, for example, have the print class called regular mods. And if I drill down into the print class and in order to use the drill down functionality, you can click the little arrow right next to it. So if we look here, um, we don't print on the guest check uh, the general mods. And that's a good thing because we don't want the guests to see burger, no onion or salad, light dressing or something like that. But if we take a look at the dollar mods or priced mods, these do print on the guest checks. So for example, if you order a martini and then a double, then that will charge extra. And then you want to make sure that that double does print on the guest check. So really quick, that's the difference between general mods and priced mods, just the print class here. This one does not print on the guest check. This one does print on the guest check, but these do not pop up the keyboard that we want. So what we do want to do is add a new mod class. So if you do not have the general mods, you can take a look at how I have them programmed. This is all the general tab. In the option bits, I have number 2, 7, 8, 12, 13, 18, 26, 27, 38. And if I scroll all the way down, I don't have anything else. Under the condiment groups, what I have them is I have them as members of all mods, but you can make them member of any kind of condiment group you want. And then here for force condiments, since I don't have any requires, I don't have anything else and there's nothing in the rest of the tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one as a template. So I select it and then I'm going to click the insert key here. And in the object number, um, please pay attention to which object number you will send them to. I don't want to send them to position one, which is where the system by default will want to send them because position one is going to be up top here. I want them to stay with the general modifiers in this area. So I'm actually going to select the first position available after the color in selection. So I have 6001 and 6002 and now I will add 6003 and then I'm going to check the box to use a template. So I'm using the general mods template and then I'm going to say special mods and then click OK. So now I have general mods and then I have a special mod and I'm going to make a single change to this one. Everything else will stay exactly the same. I'm going to go to the option tab and then check box number five. So this one is called reference entry required. And if you ever have any questions as to what these mean, all you have to do is right click on it. So when I right click on it, I actually get a description that says select to require a reference entry for menu item assigned to this class. Well, this one is a modifier, but it works the same. Uh, the text will be entered by the user. So basically, that's what we want uh, to pop up that keyboard so we can enter whatever text we want. So now I'm going to save this and I'm also going to add one for the priced mods. So I'm going to click insert again. And also I will want it after the current selection. And then I'm going to use a template for this one. And then I'm going to say special priced mods. And then I also going to add this dollar sign. So I know that that will be priced. So this one looks exactly the same and it will print on the guest check. We're going to go to the option bits and we're also going to enter reference entry required. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check option bit number one. Since this is going to be an open priced mod, I also have to tell the system how much is going to cost. So it's not going to be a preset because we're just going to ask the chef or the bartender, depending on what we're sending. Hey, this guest wants something that we don't really have on the menu or it's unusual. And they're going to say, yeah, we can cook it and it's going to cost them this much. So that's when you would use this open priced mod option whenever you have a situation where you don't have an exact price for either one of them. So I'm going to save my two new menu item classes and we can go ahead and close them. And the next step will be to actually add the menu items themselves. So I'm going to go to menu item maintenance and I'm going to click a search to populate my database with all of the items. And the same as with the menu item classes, a regular menu items will be first in the list. And then if you go all the way to the bottom, you will find the modifiers area. So these are all my modifiers and they are grouped by categories. So 
I have the different groups here for the required modifiers. So you see here in the 100,000, I have all my required mods. And these are the groups that I was showing you earlier. So these are the memberships for the meat temp, rare, medium, rare, etc. These are all of the different toppings that we have for our build our own omelet. And I'm going to scroll down to see where all of my general modifiers are. So this is where all the group modifiers are. And then here I have my food mods. So I will want to add my special mods somewhere in here unless I already have them. So I already have a special here and also a priced special. So I'm going to use these. Uh, if you do not have these, go ahead and add them. Just find another one, another modifier, and then just click insert. Select the record number where you want to add it and just name it special or special prep or whatever you want to name it and make sure it's priced at zero dollars. So after you add it, we only have to change their menu item classes. So I'm going to go to the definition record. And then we have general mods. I'm going to click the three ellipses here and I am going to give it the new special mods class that we've created. And for the second one, this is the dollar special. And then this one will get the dollar special mod. So the second one. And once we're ready with that, all I have to do is save and we can go ahead and close menu item maintenance. Now, the last thing that we need to do is actually add them on the touch screen. Now, if you want to add them in the screen lookup area, like uh, the ones that I had underneath, when you do copy one that belongs to the screen lookup, they'll just populate. But what I like to do is I like to add my special mods at the top bar. So I open page design here. I went to my transaction page and I'm changing the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 just to match my widescreen workstations. And then here under special prep, I do have this block. This block is the screen lookup where all of the modifiers, the general modifiers are added. But I do like to add mine to the top bar here. So what I can do is actually I can make this do not make a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to copy one of these buttons and then I just right click on it, copy and then right click again and paste. And then I'll just move this. I have an identical copy of it and I'll probably give it a slightly different color, maybe one of these nice olive colors. And also the menu item itself, of course, I copy it. So it says as entree. What I want to do is click the little arrow and select my special. So that's my special first one and then you also have to change this legend here because it copied as entree or you can just click generate legend and it's going to copy whatever the name is here it's going to copy it right here and also i'm going to copy it and paste it again so i get also a special with the dollar sign so i'm going to scroll down select the one with the dollar sign click ok generate legend to get the new name and now i have a regular special and a priced special and all we have to do once we're ready is just click OK. So I'm going to close out a page design and let's go to the workstation and see if that worked. And here we are at the workstation. As always, I'm going to click a quick update just to get all of the updates ready. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in, begin a fast transaction for just one guest. I'm going to ring up one of my appetizers here and then we're going to go to the food prep. So as expected, we see our two new buttons here. We're going to try the first one. So this is our special. And then here we would enter whatever information we would want for the chef and you have a space and everything you need. So that works fine. And then the dollar special. And again, this one we're going to use whenever we have a priced item. So the guest wants something that we cannot just offer for free. We'll have to charge them for it. So now we have First, the prompt that says enter the special amount. So we're going to say $2 is what's going to cost them. And then we're just going to enter the information of what we're charging them for. And remember, this one will not print on the guest check. So you can just enter whatever information. But this one will print on the guest check. So be very careful what you're entering as a description. So it's going to be descriptive enough for the kitchen to see, but also don't put anything that would offend the guest. So everything works as expected. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel this transaction. 
And that's everything I have for you today. Brian, thank you very much for your question and your suggestion. If you have a question or suggestion for a future video, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, please leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.